Hey everybody, welcome to Flash Fried. It's going to be a me and Paul edition today. Scotty's off uh, saving the universe from giant eggplants. I don't know. What? Yeah. Scotty's not going to be here? Yeah, he's off saving the universe. We can take these off? Yeah, we can take them off. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Am I supposed to leave? No, no, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm gone too. I don't know. Yeah, 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 we're all gone. We're all, we're, we're, we're not going to do it. Fuck, fuck it, dude. Scotty's on vacation. We're on vacation. Yeah. That's no, how, that's how, in a, in a fair and just world, maybe. Uh, uh, no, well, I'm a, I'm a fucking dude. I have a perverse relationship with flash fried. I've seen people in our, in our audience like, after me talking about how flash fried like breaks my brain sometimes, you know? Yeah. I'd be perfectly fine for mental health reasons if Flash Fried just became a TJ and Scotty property, and like, <laughs> I'd be fine with that too. But there's also be there, there'd also be a part of a perverse part of me that misses it. Like, I like being sad, so make me sad, TJ. Well, hanging over this particular Flash Fried is this going on. We have a giant, enormous, category terrifying category four yeah. storm, <laughs> like. Like just chilling, like just down like south of us. Um, now it is uh, supposed to hit uh, the other side of our state, but of course it's so fucking gigantic that we're gonna get some as well. I mean, we're gonna get we're gonna get a piece of this. No matter where you are in the Gulf, you're gonna get a piece of this storm because this is a, a category four storm is a big motherfucker. If this was like projected to come at us, me and TJ would not be doing this. No, we would have. <laughs> we would have went north long ago if this thing was hitting New Orleans. Like, even though that we, you know, we're on the north of, uh, side of Lake, uh, Lake Pontchartrain there. Yeah. You can see in New Orleans is kind of like the little, the big blue, you know, yeah. lake in the middle of it. We're on the north end of that, which is above sea level. Now, that doesn't mean that we're safe from shit like this. <laughs> it just means that we're not as, if I was in New Orleans right now, I'd be leaving. Uh, I was telling uh, I was telling my mom last night and a friend today that call you know because people call me when they're concerned when they see right this yeah show. I mean of course I mean like they see a giant fucking I mean like look at I mean just look at this thing I mean this is and this is like picturesque for a hurricane like this is like when someone thinks of a hurricane this is what they're fucking thinking of in their their mind's eye you know. Well, I mean, this looks eerily reminiscent of Katrina. Yeah. This is what Katrina looked like when she swept in after bouncing off and going back and strengthening. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, this is a scary fucking Katrina, storm. Katrina uh, is – this This storm is supposed to make landfall as a Category 4. Katrina made uh, landfall as a Category 3. Right. This is what so I'm this, saying. This might, like this the, might be, like, uh, you know, it's not going to hit – I don't. it doesn't look like it's going to hit a big city the way that Katrina did. Well, but, look, the, the, the truth of the matter is, is these projections here, and these are not projections. This is satellite imagery, so we can kind of see the path that she's taking. Yes. Now, Lake Charles is not a huge city, but I've been through Lake Charles. It's a big fucking city. Yeah. Houston, I don't even have to talk about Houston, right? So right. The, I mean, that, like, Houston and Lake this. Charles could definitely see some fucking And some we're not even shit. talking about, we're not even talking about the fucking low-lying, uh, lands to the southwest of us dude in, I, in i've louisiana. been up in i've been up in that shit in that real like super wetland part of louisiana like yeah. grand isle and shit uh you know that kind of stuff like those people like they got well, no choice of it if they don't get out they're dead like as if they don't you know tj if they don't leave you, they're they're not gonna live when you drive from because I've, I've i've driven from um san antonio to new orleans and back and yeah. when you do that you of course you go through a whole stretch of that land yeah. that march where the whole uh freeway is built on stilts because you're just literally driving through some super low-lying swampy coastal shit yeah. right yep and those the, the people that live in those areas south of lake charles and uh, west and east of Lake Charles near the coast are the people that are in the most fucking danger from this. Oh, yeah. The storm surge um, for them is going to be crazy. I mean, like, you're supposed to get, what, like, fucking 10 feet of fucking storm surge, 15 feet? Uh, I actually crazy. have a thing I can send you on Twitter if you want to pull it up. I have um, 
I have a, a, it, I have a video been, that gives a little bit more information here. We can look at that. Sure, we can watch that if you want, and I'll, I'll find that if, if there's something in... I in, think this tells uh, a lot of the stories. Guys, we have a major disaster that is unfolding here in the next couple of hours. We now have a category for Hurricane, Hurricane Laura. It's sitting in the northern Gulf of Mexico. It's moving pretty quickly, so I'd say this thing is going to make landfall sometime around midnight or so, give or take a couple of hours. Upper Texas coast, the Louisiana coast, max sustained wind of 140 miles per hour. So this is no joke. Now, once it moves inland, the wind strength is going to go down quite a bit, but the storm surge is going to last for a while. And by the way, we're also going to have inland flooding problems from this because there's going to be a huge amount. Of so here's some of the storm surge here. Right. You see, so that these are the, these are the 50, numbers that I had. These are not inches. These are feet. This 15 yeah, to 20 yeah. feet storm surge here. Yeah, they're saying in these like in the Lake Charles area, in the low lying southwestern uh, coastal areas of Louisiana, that the storm surge may penetrate 30 miles inland. Right. So we're talking about storm surge like coming up to here and shit. We had a storm, um, I don't know, like a month and a half ago that came out of fucking nowhere. My phone blared at me. Warning, warning, you know, how we, how we get that shit. Yeah, Beep, you know, and then you're like, what the hell? It, like, it might go off uh, while we're doing this show. I've got my phone sitting right here, so you guys might get to hear what it sounds like, but it's disconcerting to say the least. You guys will, it, we'll both blow up if it happens, but yeah. we had a, we had one of the, you remember that storm we had about a month ago. Yeah. Flew through here, dropped a fuck ton of rain. We probably had two to four feet of storm surge in this area during that storm. Yeah. So the ultimate truth of the matter is we're going to get a lot of rain here. It's going to flood in certain parts of the area we're in, especially south and east of uh, Lake Pontchartrain, where we live. We live to the north of it. Um, though, like, if I, like I said, if I was in New Orleans, I'd be the fuck out of here already. Because, you know, New Orleans is going to flood no matter what. That's what I told my mom when she New called Orleans, me. New Orleans the, floods in fucking a bad rainstorm, man. You know, there's... Just- that city, that city probably shouldn't even exist at this point. My mama, my mama, bless her heart. She thinks I think she thinks I live in New Orleans. Right. When it, when these happen, she always asks me like, "PJ, I heard New Orleans is gonna flood so bad, Mama. I do not live in New Orleans. It's okay. <laughs> I'm I'm a, I'm I'm a while I'm a ways away from New Orleans. Amount of rain but. that'll be dumped. Yeah, it's crazy. Up into the Ozarks, eventually up to the Holy Ohio shit. Valley. The storm surge is by far the most dangerous part of this storm. There are 15 to 20 feet of storm surge that is being forecast for the western part of the Louisiana Gulf Coast. That's where the worst of it's going to be. I cannot stress this. Here's the rainfall, and uh, you know we're in like the I think we're in the three to five inch range. Now keep in mind, guys. Though here's the thing with TJ and I, because I've been here long enough, and TJ grew up here. Yeah, I've been here long enough. Like we're jovial and we're kind of joking about this. Number one, that is not to denigrate the suffering and damage that a bunch of people oh, are no. about to go Listen, I, I last night. Uh, I I mean I I usually have a fuck. I set my alarm to like wake me up every couple hours to check on what this was thing was doing because like. If it made oh, yeah. a fucking sudden northern turn that it wasn't supposed to, like if it fucking went north before it, you know, because it was going northwest. Like if it decided like fuck west, I'm just going straight north. It would have just like went right to right into us. So I was like constantly checking to make sure that was not happening. We wow. are, uh, you know, and, and like, look, we also understand, too, that like while it's pretty, you know, they've got a pretty good idea where this storm is going now. These storms love to be unpredictable, and this thing could fucking make a wacky little bounce off the land and go back into the Gulf and 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 hit us. You know what I mean? Like it's happened before, so it's like, you know, we we're we're being jovial right now, but I don't know about you, TJ, but there's an anxiety underlying all of this shit for me with this storm because this is a big motherfucker, and it is like these places, Cameron, fucking Shreveport, Alexandria. These places are not far from us. No. Like, you got to understand, this is not like, these are a stone's throw away, our close neighbors. This storm missed us, by all accounts, or looks like it's going to miss us by fucking inch. Right. I mean, like, and that's why I was up, I woke myself up periodically last night looking at it. I mean, Chelsea's never fucking seen a storm like this. I mean, like, there's been hurricanes that have come. But, you know, it, they've been little joke hurricanes, you know, like Category 1s and things that turn into a tropical storm, dude, you know. Dude, just one, and a, well, the, the, the one that you guys came over here, Barry. Yeah. That was not a joke storm. It was for us, though. 
but it, it was where we were. No storm. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like you guys, you guys legit packed up your animals and came and lived with me for three or four days or two days or whatever it was until we were sure that this was just going to be bullshit because it could have been way worse. Right. This is one of those storms that, like, man, dude, if this thing was a hundred miles east of where it is now and and with the same trajectory, we'd be out of Louisiana. Yeah, I'd be right gone. Now. I'd be. I'd be. I'd be up in. Uh... Tennessee like or something. Night. I don't know. Last night or the day before, we'd have been fucking up in, you know, wherever, Montana, waiting yeah. this one out. Dude, I got a bag ready to go. Like, the second this motherfucker, like, Chelsea's watching this thing, like, if she comes in here and says, it's, it made a wrong turn, I'm going to be like, all right, let's get the fuck. So, like, as a, so, I mean, that's definitely hanging over this episode. Like, oh, shit. Yeah, there's a, there's like a weird fucking anxiety hanging over this whole thing because this is happening as we speak, you know? Right, exactly. So, I mean, it's kind of crazy and it kind of sets a, the con, a, a, a con, a stage, the context, you know, stuff like that. Um, so I'm going to smoke and try not to choke. This guy, this and guy, try to joke. Dude, this dude says something pretty chilling in this, in this little clip, honestly. Hold on one okay, second. Listen, I'm going to play the rest of it. It's enough. If you've been evacuated, you have to take that seriously. I'm not the type of person that likes to overhype things, but this is the real deal. This is something you don't see every day. You're going to become part of the ocean and it will be unsurvivable. Uh, in addition, you're going to become so part that, of the that, ocean that one, and it will be unsurvivable. I love <laughs> that one thing I wanted to bring up and I'm going to read it to you. Yeah. Um, right now. So I read this this morning when I woke up. Yeah. This is, this is from, um, the national weather service. Okay. Mm -hmm. and it shows this basic same thing with the storm surge of 15 to 20 feet possible in, uh, you know, Lake Charles area or south of that. Yeah. I mean, the, the one I have here is actually a little more dire, so maybe I will send it to you, but I'll just read, like, honestly, let me just read the verbiage on this. Gotcha. He, didn't, he didn't just come up with that himself. I know. <laughs> it's still pretty crazy. The combination of a dangerous storm surge and the tide will cause normally dry areas near the coast to be flooded by rising waters moving inland from the shoreline. The waters could reach the following heights above ground, and they call it unsur uh, unsurvivable storm surge. Yeah. So this is like they're trying to they're trying to tell the people that are in this the the path of this fucking thing. If you stay here, you will die. <laughs> There's, There's no nothing. fucking question about it. You are dead. Right. Nothing is gonna save you if you don't get out. And as you can see, these are you know like it's swinging pretty wide around us, but we're catching all these front bands as it comes in. Oh yeah, we're catching the back bands if this thing doesn't bounce all the way across the country and instead decides to come back. You know what I mean? It's like we're catching rain for a few days. It's gonna rain a lot here for a long time. Oh my god, yeah. So it is what it is. You know, um, we're we're monitoring the situation. And uh, uh, here's the crazy thing too, and this is like. I don't mean to get all climate changey on this, but um, this is, uh, there have been more named storms this year than there's ever been since we started recording, like by this time of the year. Like it took till, till the end of the, the month to get as many named storms as we've had in 2020. And of course, it's 2020, so that should be surprising to fucking nobody, but... I was tweeting about this when Marco, which is the storm that preceded this, was creeping into the Gulf, and people were doing the apocalyptic double hurricane bullshit. Right? Dude, I looked. I, I took one look at Marco, and I'm like, Marco ain't shit. But when I saw Laura, like even yeah. before she became a tro even she, even when she was just a, a tropical depression, I'm looking at her. I'm like, hmm, I got a bad feeling about this one, man. Yeah. Like it and was I, just there was something like it was because she already had an eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, she really already had, early. like, that that well-formed, defined eye. And I'm like, uh-oh. That <laughs> that's a bad bitch right there. Marco ain't shit. Marco's going to be like, eh, I'm going to, okay, yes, yeah. great. But this Laura motherfucker. going to do <laughs> profound damage to the southeast coast of Louisiana and the, uh, uh, or the southwest coast of Louisiana and the uh, eastern coastal areas of Texas on the Gulf. Everywhere on the Gulf is going to get a piece of this bitch. Oh, yeah. And, and I mean, look, and we're closer than some. We're right smack dab in the middle of that shit. So we ain't like out of the woods. No. And even deep inland. I mean, they said that like uh, the rainfall it's going to put inland could even cause flooding like deep inland. So, 
well and where does that flow in what in what direction does the mississippi flow again tj could you remind me <laughs> yeah uh, flow on down south buddy oh it does it does oh shit well good thing we ain't nowhere near there's no rivers that flow down southward toward the sea which will already be elevated tj Good thing we're nice and cozy here up north of Pontchartrain. Itself a di- a fucking time bomb waiting to go. <laughs> oh fuck me! You gotta love um, it. I, I fucking hate Louisiana. I can't wait to put this state in my fucking <laughs> tail lights and never visit it again. I can't tell you. See what other, a happy day see that on the flip side, Louisiana. Um, no, I, I love Louisiana. I don't <laughs> wish nobody harm here, but. Uh, Fuck me, dude. I got to get out of this state. <laughs> you know, I was thinking this morning about how Louisiana, if you say it, I get, I don't want to say properly because whatever, but you know, like some people say it with five syllables like me, Louisiana, and other right. people it's just Louisiana. So it's three, it goes that. five to three, you know, Louisiana. Because my family is from Arkansas and Missouri. Missouri. Respectively. That's how my family says Missouri. That's how Pimp Monk says Mississippi. Well, he's from Mississippi, but I've heard him say Missouri. Missouri. Oh, damn, Missouri. Missouri. Mississippi. 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 You know, and I actually prefer Missouri. the the kind of bastardized redneck version of it than, than the, uh, I like Louisiana. Louisiana. Like, I, if, if, if I could, like, keep speaking the way I am now incredibly to people without it raising eyebrows, just go, like, you know, where do you live, Paul? Oh, I live in Louisiana. You know, and I, I do sometimes. Like, I, I lilt it as much as possible because I think it sounds better as Louisiana than Louisiana. Louisiana. It's not, like, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know, dude. But it is what it is. Yeah, around here, most of the people that grew up around here that live down here that I've heard say it say Louisiana. Yep. Louisiana boy. Louisiana. Here in Louisiana. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's our problem. Most of you guys don't need to give a fuck about that. <clears throat> but just know that as we're giggling our way through this, we're actually scared for our fucking lives. Yes, just you know, <laughs> put, put, you know, put things you know. in context a little bit. Oh, I I want to. I know that this. I, I'm very concerned about this Twitch streamer that almost got murdered. But I did have some. I wanted to tell you this. Um, so you know, uh, corn pop, right? Oh yeah, corn pop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a little cat uh, I got. Um, so you know he has like skin problems wait, wait, and shit. Wait, 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 you're talking about Cornelius? Yeah, corny. Okay, I thought you meant corn pop, the bad dude. No, no, no. I'm t- we, pot. but that's probably why we call him corn pop. Uh, Fair enough, because because of that. But yeah, corn All pop. Right. Uh, I guess I should have specified. I'm talking about my cat here. Yeah, yeah, corny. Yeah, I know him as corny. That's the one I picked up. But you guys are, uh, have adopted corn pop, and I wasn't aware. Yeah. But uh, he's, uh, you know, he's got, like, skin problems and shit. And, uh, you know, we're like, oh, we we thought maybe he had, like, food allergies or something and all this other stuff. And uh, we took him to the vet. I actually took him to a dermatologist because, you know, he's got, like, it's the self-inflicted kind of, like, wounds and stuff from, like, scratching too much. Of course. And, by the way, TJ, I bet the bill on that was reasonable and fair. Oh, yeah, it was totally reasonable. I mean, like, it didn't, it wasn't frustratingly, like, crazily high or anything like that. Reasonable and fair. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know. <laughs> For the vet. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, like, because, you know, pet specialists, they they are not like expensive. Specialists. It's like, it, if you have shit to your health insurance, if you, the, the more obscure the specialist that you're sent sent to, the more you should wince because you're getting fucked. Oh, cat. <laughs> let, let me tell you something, Pat, uh, Paul, cat dermatologist, dime a dozen. They don't, they don't get to charge nothing. Oh, um, really? no, <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was prohibitive. It was crazy expensive, but somebody's uh, calling me from Wyckoff, New Jersey. Awesome. Hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to mute up and find out what this is. Okay. I'm going to wait for Paul because I want him to hear this. But, uh, yeah, so we took the cat to. Um, All right, never to, mind. Nothing. We're good. Okay, I took the cat to the dermatologist. All right, and the, the point of the story is this. So we got on the allergy tests. So here's what I learned. <clears throat> My cat is allergic to everything. Just literally everything. Like across the board. 
every fucking single thing that they tested for, he had some allergic reaction to. So, <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> I'm just fucking, I'm like, what the hell? He's like, he's allergic to cat dander. Cat dander. Uh, he's a fucking cat. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. like, I don't know what to, I don't, I don't even know at this point. I was talking to, um, Amelia about this and this is speculation based on uh the time I spent um volunteering at shelters and shit a lot of times street cats which is what corny is he oh, was yeah. a feral kitten that you guys found a lot of times there's a lot of inbreeding that goes on and so their um immune systems are compromised in various ways and I'm pretty sure that's what you guys are dealing with with corny. Now, of course, there's a medical diagnosis and treatment for that that I can't give you. But, like, I'm telling you, dude, it's too reminiscent of my little dog, Boogie. Yeah. Who was overbred for a different reason because she was, you know, like a boutique little dog. And uh, she had every fucking problem under the sun, dude. Skin problems, teeth were falling out before she was, like, three years old. Yeah, my dog, uh, uh, Hercules, when I was growing up, was same was the same thing, like overbred, too much inbreeding. How old did Hercules live to? He lived to be 10, but he was pretty fucked up by the time he died. Yeah. See, he, Boogie only lived to be fucking five years old, dude. Her liver, kidneys, and uh, pancreas failed due to just her fucking fucked up yeah, system. Yeah, that's crazy. At five years <laughs> old. Yeah, that's fucking nuts. Yeah, I remember the In video. That, yeah, it sucked, dude. That it was, was horrible. Like, it was brutal. It was brutal. Yeah, and I mean, like, and Cornelius, he's the same. I mean, like, I don't know if he has, if he's going to have all those host of problems, but he definitely has super fucking awful allergies. I mean, just for everything. I saw him the other day with the cone on, and I was like, oh, man. In something you guys posted, I think it was in one He's of been in that things. cone for like a month. And I mean, yeah. I don't know if he's, I don't know if there's any insight for him. He might be in that cone fucking virtually for fucking like most of his life. Like, I don't even know. <laughs> I'm not sure what to, I mean, I'm not sure even yeah. sure what to fucking do about it. That fucking sucks. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> no, it, it's it's lame, but what are you going to do? Anyway, man drove 5,000 kilometers to kill Twitch streamer Matthew Thane. Now, I, am I supposed to know who Matthew Thane is? No, and okay. I don't either. I just thought that this was, uh, you know, d dude, you know what it made me think of? What? And I would drive 5,000 miles, and uh, I would drive 5,000 and more. <laughs> just to see, just to kill the man on Twitch who talked that shit to me the other day. Bad at the, you know, like, like I just, it was like 5,000 miles your salty ass drove to try and kill this dude. All right. Over internet beef. This is the shit. A 23-year-old male is believed to have taken his own life as a SWAT team descended on his house after he took a 5,000-kilometer round trip to allegedly kill a teenager over an online gaming dispute. <laughs> Matthew Thane, 18, was shot dead at 6 a.m. on Tuesday at his home in Flower Mound, Texas. On Wednesday night, police in the California town of uh, Pleasanton uh, close to 2,700 kilometers away, moved to arrest the man they suspected was behind Thane's murder, but he is believed to have taken his own life before they could arrest him. About 11 p.m., he was found dead from a gunshot wound inside a house. Uh, evidence reported he found on his mobile phone linked him to the murder in Texas. Uh, Flower Mound detectives released... <laughs> fucking Flower Mound is such a terrible town name. Detectives released a statement saying the suspected shooter of Thane wore a helmet and jeans and was thought to have immediately fled the area. The fuck? I wish so, I would tell you I wish I would tell you what their dispute was about. Uh yeah, I mean I couldn't find anything that said what but like obviously they're not going to release the details because who care like who knows? Right. Like honestly like who knows at the end I'm sure the authorities know but they're not trying to release all the details and then active investigation <laughs> and yeah. like it, it just it, it you know it it sprouted over an online game so it was probably about a game. Like oh, yeah, I mean, sure it was, but I wish I knew like, exactly, like, what he felt like. I got to kill this son of a bitch. See, here's the thing. Like, I can't empathize with driving 5,000 miles to attempted murder somebody and then killing myself, uh, myself as the SWAT team descends on me when they find out what I'm trying to do, right? right? But I can empathize with that feeling of wanting to kill stupid people in video games. Oh, yeah. 
because I've played like I've dabbled enough in specifically MOBAs, which are um, multiplayer online battle arena games based off of Dota. So they're like that, like Le League of Legends is one. Um, you know, they're all they're super popular. I played I've played all of them. I'm not good at them, but I'm competent enough at them that when people are totally, completely incapable at them, it drives me fuck. It fills me with rage. Scotty, if Scotty were here, see, this would be a great time for Scotty to be here because I can't tell, I can't count the amount of time. Scotty used to chill with me a lot more back in the day when I lived in Bellevue. Like he would just be in town, you know what I mean? And he'd cruise by and he'd be coming up my hallway in the building that I lived. And he'd said that like from my elevator, he'd start hearing me going, you dumb fucks. You stupid motherfuckers. The action is on the left side of the map. You are on the right side of the... And as he got closer, it just got louder and louder and louder, you know? And then he'd come into my fucking apartment, which I used to just leave unlocked because I lived in fucking Bellevue. Who's going to... You know what I mean? So he'd just come in my apartment and I'd be like, you dumb ignorant stupid you fucking should never have been born why are you even playing the game you've wasted 40 minutes of my life you're you know and I've, i'm sure i dropped a few r bombs which i'm trying not to do as well <laughs> yeah i mean i've i've heard it i've i remember it like the way i remember it is you when i when i remember you doing that kind of shit it wasn't so much that you would just like be like you stupid motherfucker i mean he would say that but it was more like you would even like sit there and like explain in your anger like why that they were stupid, you know? Well, I was trying to like I was trying to dress it like dress it down for people who don't know anything about MOBAs. Right. But if people that are into that want to hear the rant, it would be like, "You why are you left lane? Why are you left lane? <laughs> they are literally taking towers in right lane. There's five men right. Why are you why are there three of you in left? Why am I the only person defending this? They're pushing the core. <laughs> we lost. We lost because of you." You know what so I mean? So basically imagine that but like 12 million <laughs> decibels louder. <laughs> right. Way louder. And in, laced with way more invective. Yes. Filled with way more cuss words and R slurs. Yes, absolutely. Um, and that's basically where I get. So I can definitely empathize with the feeling of like subhuman people playing. Like I have, but you know, like joke. at some point in the fucking twenty seven hundred kilometer, I guess drive. I don't know why this is a, a story about something that happened in America that uses kilometers, but whatever. Um, Somewhere in that 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 long drive, you would think that you would cool down a little bit and be like, "Yeah, you know, maybe it's not worth it to fucking murder someone for this." No, they're just using kilometers because this was covered in the new this yeah, particular New Zealand article, uh, Herald or whatever. But, yeah. Herald, but I just liked it because it was an even five thousand. I found other articles that were had all the same <laughs> shit, but I liked that. You know, yeah, you wanted to do that. The uh, what was it called? The are they called the Pretenders? Pre uh, there were something proclaimers, like that. proclaimers. It was the proclaimers, yeah. The proclaimers, that's it, exactly. Yeah. They were like twin brothers. Yeah. And I would walk five hundred miles. All right. Uh, hey, uh yeah, good. <laughs> Whatever. Good on them. So, I guess, guess work. Let's do some. This is a. Uh, here's the states where uh, Kanye West will be on the ballot. Apparently. Yeah, that's right. We got the the mobile version of this, but whatever. Uh, rapper turned presidential candidate Kanye West is moving ahead with his long shot bid for the White House. One that's becoming even more challenging as he struggles to get his name on the ballot in November. By the, by the way, I would like to put out there that Kanye West has openly admitted that his campaign is about siphoning Biden voters away so that Trump can win. Good for him. So like, like he's like, he basically admitted it early in his campaign. So this is, you know, this is what that's about. Uh, since declaring his candidacy in July, West has met the requirements to get his name on the ballot. He's actually met with Trump people for fuck's sake. So, I mean, like, this is no, brazen. Like he's, com he's, com he's like, you know, he's, he's, you know, he knows what he's doing. He's stupid. And he's not the first spoiler that knows what they're doing either. No, the, you know, like this is, this is an old tactic and it's a pretty good, this is going to actually probably be a pretty decent tactic. He's on the ballot in a lot of states. So here is where he's on the ballot. Arkansas, uh, Colorado. I can see some of those weirdos in Colorado voting for him. Oklahoma, sure. Utah, Vermont. Okay. And, uh, and then he's got pending applications in Iowa, Missouri, Minnesota, and Tennessee. 
Uh, the deadline to file as an independent has not yet passed in 11 states. So he's got a chance to get on. Uh, it says like he's going to be, it says he's not going to get on the ballot in 30 other states. So like right. 30 states are like, it's just a pipe dream. He could get, but he could be on the ballot in, a, in, in almost 20. So you have to ask yourself, like knowing that there's going to be 30 states that you can't get on the ballot and basically precludes you from winning the presidency. So, you know, you know, right there, you're hamstrung. But he, per- he persists, and he's actually seeking to get on the ballot in all of those states that are pending. He wants to be on the ballot in every state that he can be to siphon every vote he can. Now, maybe it's not necessarily in his heart of hearts to make Trump president or whatever, but he basically said some shit that I don't know if you can find it. I can't remember. I'd quote it if I could. I mean, we know Kanye West has a big old Trump boner. Right. And we know we know that he's actually he met with Trump. About, like somebody asked him about it. Somebody was like, you know, what do you think about the idea that you would siphon votes away from, you know, uh, Biden or whatever? And he said good or some shit like that. To that effect. He he didn't outright say like, hey, I'm here to siphon votes away Look, from I'm Biden. pretty sure I don't remember it, but I'm pretty sure I read a story about him actually like meeting with like <laughs> Republican officials to try to help him get on the ballot. So I mean, like he, 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 he's he knows what he's up to. You know, it's, uh, dude, fucking who knows? The, in in bizarro world, anything is possible. TJ and the so fucking here's a here's an article that might be talking about what you're what you're talking about. Uh, Kanye West indicates he is yeah. running for president to siphon votes from Joe Biden. Um, Kanye West hinted that his presidential campaign is designed to spoil former Vice President Joe Biden's bid to unseat President Trump this November, according to a new report. West and Forbes editor were exchanging messages Thursday following reports uh, that Republican activists were helping get the billionaire hip-hop star on the ballot in multiple states to help Trump's re-election and siphon votes away from Biden. When asked about the motivation for his 2020 ambitions, West replied he was walking rather than running. Uh, West filed paperwork to appear on the ballot blah, 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 when confronted with those numbers and the idea that his effort would serve as a Biden spoiler. West reportedly texted back, I'm not going to argue with you. Right. So pretty much uh, saying and, like, and, yeah. And when, when asked again about her, hold on, bring oh, that back. Sorry. Bring that back. Sorry. Didn't when mean. asked again about hurting Biden's campaign, he, he, he reportedly tweeted back, I'm not denying it. I just told you. Right. So, so that's what it's about. Well, not that I care. Like, yeah, I mean, not, you know, whatever. <laughs> like, I know that. I know that from your perspective, it's like whatever. But can I ask you something in peace and harmony and peace and love, with no argument? Peace, yeah. And I'll take whatever. If you don't agree with me, I'll just. No, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll, there's a good chance I will. Let's just, love, yeah, let's put it forth. What do, you, what do you think about four more years of Trump being better than a middling, capitulating <laughs> Biden administration and then four to eight more years of a Pence conservative? Yeah, um, I, I, this is a, an initial argument that I was actually making uh, back when I was more on the Bernie or bus side is that, sure. you know. I mean, uh, it's 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 very unpopular. I can tell you that when I throw it out there, people are like, "No." The because- way that I phrased it was that you know, you can if, if you have four more years of Trump, then a, a progressive would have another chance in four years we to try to do have it. four more years of an effective lame duck Trump, right? Four, which is like, yeah. And then what do you do? And then after that, you know, a progressive would have another shot at the fucking um, the White House. In that, and in those four years, we could spend that lame duck second term of Trump actually finding a progressive and not, dude, I read your weird erotic fiction about Biden the other night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I fucking like give you a bravo on that. I liked it, but I, you know, I don't know if that's the equivalent or whatever. That was great shit. But like, it, not that, you know, not some, but not that. Yeah, not the thing that feasts upon you and then builds you into something else, but like an actual progressive, you know, in the vein of yeah. Bernie Sanders. This is why I'm not super concerned about this issue because I see a lot of pros and cons either way, and I really don't. I mean, well, <laughs> I will tell the, you, people. When I say pros, pros, uh, pros are pretty relative. I think our paths forward are pretty fucking shitty. So I don't know, um, but I'm really I'm, not. I'm, my I. I don't really think as much hinges on this election as people say. I think I think there's just different paths to possibly fucking work this out. But I mean, I mean Clinton I th- Clinton was effectively lame duck to second term yeah. by the controversy that erupted at the end of his first. The yeah. October surprise of Lewinsky. Yep. 
Um, you know, like it's it's very common for second terms of unpopular presidents, which Trump is. Yeah, he's definitely not popular. He he's not a popular. He's not an overwhelmingly. He's not an Obama. Obama went into his term strong. No, Obama. Obama. Uh, man, he lamed up himself, dude. That dude had so much political capital. He just Obama was just a pussy. Obama was a he. He was a corporatist yeah. in sheep clothing. We bought into his hope and change, and America has a special destiny. And we Dude, doesn't we it all make went, you sick? I know it's kind of an aside, but like when you watch Obama talk now, doesn't it just like fill you to like the brim with like? Oh, he makes disgust, me disgust. He's, you know? he's like a sick lord when I look at him. I look at him now and I just see the evil behind him, you know? Yeah. And I'm just like, uh, but back in the day, dude, I'm not going to lie. In his first campaign, I bought in. Oh, me too. Absolutely. Because he was talking in ways that politicians didn't talk. And I figured no way a shill would sneak in like this. This is this guy's from the streets, probably. He's black. You know what I mean? Yeah. And plus, he was a, like a community organizer. People are calling him a socialist and shit. All this stuff sounds good. You know, it's like, yeah, socialist. <laughs> I mean, he actually wasn't a socialist, but the fact that the Republicans were calling him that was like, wow, this is kind of oh, cool. He talked all that shit too. He talked about health care. Yeah, I mean, he, was, he talked about abortion being enshrined beyond the Constitution. He talked about closing Gitmo with right. a. He was running. A, he ran one. a super left campaign for America at the time. Obviously, like now, it wouldn't really be that super left. It'd be pretty, no. pretty center of the the Democrat party. But like at the time, like we were so steeped in like the Clinton neoliberal kind of shit that it was like Obama seemed like an antidote to that. But then like we realized pretty quickly, like, Nope, we were fooled. <laughs> he's just that he's just another, he's, he's another neolib. Yep. And we haven't had anything. We haven't had a candidate uh, other than Bernie Sanders outside of that since Hillary Clinton, neolib. <sighs> oh yeah. Obviously. I you just wonder <laughs> neolib. And it's just like, look, he's going to be lame ducked. The good thing about Bernie Sanders is we never got, I never got to get disappointed by how he actually was as president. Cause I know that there would have been like, you know, whenever someone is promising the stuff Bernie Sanders is promising, you know, he becomes president and you know, here's another angle on this shit too. COVID is fucking fucked up right now. Right. It's not, it's probably not going to get better. Like Biden might be better in the short term, but in the long term, we're still fucked. And like, if we make Trump own it for four more years, lame duck while Congress deals with it. Oh yeah. <laughs> then he, then, then they can't. And then by the time Trump leaves office, COVID is like kind of under control. Then they can't make the argument that like, Oh, this is Joe Biden's. Cause I'll tell you what, dude, if Joe Biden takes over right now, you better believe that in, I'm trying to do the math in my head in 2024, the Republican Mike Pence-esque neocon candidate will say, Joe Biden let thousands die. Yeah. You know what I mean? He bungled the response to the worst. It'll just, because that's how it happens. Presidents just inherit the problem. And if you take over midstream, that's the way it is in the eyes of a lot of Americans. There, if, if you go back and go, wait a minute, it was Trump that bungled it. You're going to be like, oh, oh, so now are we going to blame Trump? For everything, Trump presidents you know I mean? are yeah presidents are fun. If if they if uh, they inherit good things, it it was all them. If they inherit bad things, it was all their fucking predecessor. Of course, and the party, uh, the party part, the partisan cheerleaders on both sides are just like yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> presidents have no accountability anymore, especially with this like almost perfect half and half split of the fucking electorate. Well, it's really ha it's, it's really kind of like a split of the people who actually vote and then a huge number of people who are just like, eh, I don't well, give I mean, a if fuck. You take, you, if you take us eh people out, it's yeah. perfect. Yeah, it's like they, a perfect split. No, no, no. It's perfect. It's, it's like perfect for them. It shows how they have refined the American electorate over the last 50 years to exactly what they want it to be, hyper-polarized believing with all their might that their side is the savior of humanity and the other side is the destroyer of humanity. Meanwhile, both of, every time every time either of them gets a shot up at bat, it's like <laughs> nothing happens. It, it's, it's, it's a simple business transaction. It's like all of this uh, pomp and circumstance and all of this emotion that gets whipped up. For them, like the transition of power, and I put that in quotes because it really isn't, is just like it's a business transaction. It's like meet the meet the new boss, same as the old boss. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. And we're just pawns in their game. Of course. 
Uh, CDC quietly revises coronavirus guidance to downplay importance of testing for asymptomatic people. This is what happens when you gut a uh, very important part of the bureaucracy and then fill it with a bunch of crony, know-nothing, yes-men, bobbleheads who are willing to go along with, like, we need to make Trump look better. Yeah, so the CDC has quietly revised its guidance on coronavirus testing to say that people without symptoms who are exposed to an infected person might not need to be screened. We don't necessarily need to be counting that. Uh, the agency previously recommended testing for anyone with a recent known or suspected exposure uh, to the virus, even if they did not have symptoms. The CDC's previous guidance cited the potential for asymptomatic and pre-symptomatic transmission as a reason why people without symptoms who were exposed to the virus be quickly identified and tested. Uh, so basically, in order to uh, to make the numbers look better without actually making the numbers better, they're hoping to just stop testing asymptomatic people because uh, they don't want those counted in the totals. But it's probably going to backfire because it's just going to make there be more asymptomatic carriers, which is probably going to spread the disease further. Yeah. So. Yeah, dude. Pretty stupid decision. Pretty, I mean, well, and pretty obvious decision, too, when you look at, like, what's the motive behind such a decision? I mean, I think it's to try and make Trump look better. It's to try and act like our testing was better than it was by kind of quietly ruling out people being proactive about getting tested. And it's a way to roll back testing as well. Yeah, but ultimately, I think this is going to backfire even for its intended purpose, because I think it's just going to make there be more asymptomatic carriers that <coughs> are going to make it spread I'm further. Sorry, dude. I mean, you know me. I've been more, <coughs> I've been more careful than most. Um, you know, Amelia has gone into public more than I, she shopped a few times and went and got herself cigarettes and stuff. And, yeah. um, but she always masks up and washes up when she gets home. So she's my light, most likely point of exposure, but she's here with me. Yeah. 23 hours of the rest of the day. You know what I mean? So we stay right here. Yeah. I don't, we don't go out much. Uh, Scotty, like I've had like Scotty's come over to drop equipment off with me and shit. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so I've seen him, but I've always masked up and he's always social distance. <laughs> I take the package and I say, hey, and I, he stays in his car and I never get near <laughs> his, poking my head in there, you know? Yeah. I've been very careful, but I'm telling you what, dude, right now you can go to Walgreens where we're at and get tested for this shit. I'm thinking about going through when this whole hurricane shit is over and just taking advantage of that really? just to make sure I didn't have it or don't have it, you know? Yeah. It's crazy stuff. Because I live in a fucking apartment complex, dude. I got fucking like 10,000 people that live right on top of me and all around me and all their snot-nosed little kids touching all the shit that I touch when I go up and down my stairs to poop Dinor. So it's just like, you know, I got... It's, it's fucked. <laughs> and to hear that the CDC is like backpedaling on proactive measures to fight this is like, why would why would you do that? Why would this, why would this Center for Disease Control do something that would allow a disease to spiral out of control? Are you controlling it in the wrong in the in a different direction that I'd been come to understand? Well, uh, now that the uh, you know Trump has taken over the so much of the process, it's now the center for spin control. So, right because he gutted it and filled it with his little bobblehead yes men, <laughs> yeah, um, voodoo, voodoo magicians and shit, <laughs> ghost resurrectionists and whatever the fuck else. It's pretty crazy. All you need to do is inject hydroxychloroquine into your veins and then burn the skull of a squirrel on an obsidian <laughs> pyre and dance and bark at the moon, man. That will cure what ails ya. Then invite by my Jesus tears water. The real tears of tears of Jesus, man. Pour that down your throat and no coronavirus will touch ya, man. And we got Trump retweeting that. <laughs> <laughs> He's speaking at the fucking RNC, dude. She spoke at the RNC. Yeah, that was pretty nuts. I might be hyperbolizing a little bit, but not much. This bitch is crazy. No, you're not hyperbolizing very much at all. <sighs> anyway. Oh, Jesus fucking A, man. Cops admit vandalizing cars of man who filed complaint against them, prosecutor says. Oh. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm sure this is an isolated incident. This type of shit never happens. So. Uh, yeah, this will probably be the only corrupt cop story we, we read today. Um, oh, cool. To Asbury, uh, Asbury, 
pol- uh, uh, park. Uh, Police officers admitted Tuesday that they vandalized a pair of cars last year belonging to a man who filed an internal affairs complaint against them. Um, Asbury uh, Park Police Officer Stephen Martinson, 31, and former SLEO2 uh, Thomas Dowling, 27, both of Asbury Park, pleaded guilty to fourth-degree criminal mischief. And as part of their plea deals, uh, they must forfeit any future public employment in the state, according to a statement from Monmouth uh, County. Uh, they also face probation when they are sentenced on October 16th and must pay back back the victim for the damage they caused to his cars. Spiteful retaliation from law enforcement officers towards a citizen for any reason is an unacceptable option. Uh, this is in no way condoned at any level for any reason, uh, Grandma Grammaccioni said in a statement, all members of the law enforcement community must maintain the public's trust by conducting themselves at the highest level of integrity and decency. So yeah, these this guy filed some kind of complaint against these cops, and uh, they retali- they responded by uh, vandalizing his cars. I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm, the only thing I'm kind of shocked about is that they actually are suffering repercussions for it. Peace officers in this country, TJ. Can I just do you mind mm-hmm. if I wax? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I don't know. Wax what you away. Call wax on. Wax off. You know. <laughs> I wax authoritarian for a second, TJ. Can I wax authoritarian for a second, TJ? Yeah. The men. And women in this country that constitute what I and my family always called the thin blue line, TJ. Yeah. The men and women that put their lives on the line every day to make sure that we live the safe and comfortable lives that we have yeah. are the real superheroes, TJ. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. And to think that this is anything other than an isolated incident or an attempt for the supervillains to infiltrate the superheroes. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Hell yeah. Preach the gospel. Ridiculous. <laughs> this has never happened. The cops don't fuck with people who they can't get legally. The cops don't make don't follow people and target people for personal vendettas. Absolutely not. A, a peace officer in this country, TJ, would rather take their service revolver out and go to a place where they are sure they are safe and shoot themselves in the head, TJ, than damage the property. I'm sorry. I'm trying to channel Scotty because he's not here. Am <laughs> trying, I doing okay? Trying to do with the devil's advocate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're doing a pretty good job. No, I, I hate these fucking cops. Fuck these. I'm glad <laughs> they got caught and admitted it or whatever. All right, so this is unrelated, but do you want to see the most disgusting thing you've ever seen in your life? Um, I doubt it will be, but sure. I've seen some disgusting. All right, fair enough. <laughs> you, got, you got me. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> Why would you do that to me? It looks like he's trying to consume her. <laughs> what? It looks like he feels a romantic pull towards her, and she <laughs> is horrified by having to touch him. Oh, yeah. Look at it. It's cringe. It's consolidated, weaponized cringe. I want to get in super close to this. Oh, my God. No, don't. I got to close my eyes for a second. I can't keep looking at it. Oh, God. Oh, it's closer now. Can you feel the love tonight? (laughs) Oh, I'm sorry, all you Trump fans out there. Oh, God, dude. We need a Trump cover of Kiss the Girl from fucking... uh, Oh, shit. (laughs) Kiss the girl. (laughs) There, I see her standing there across two ways. She never has a lot to say, but there's something about her. <laughs> and I don't know why. I love how your Trump I'm impression is just... Try, I'm gonna kiss the girl. You know, <laughs> she just, just like sounds like someone with Down syndrome. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to do him. <laughs> you do. Like, I knew who it was. I, don't know. <laughs> I know. But it, it does, that's how I have to do it, you know? It's just like generic retard voice. That's my Trump. I've never heard him sing, so I imagine oh that's how God. Trump would sing. <sighs> <laughs> you never heard Trump sing? He sung? Oh, hell yeah. When did he sing? You probably are going to... You, you you might remember this when you see it. I just did, yeah. It's been pushed out of my memory. Of my... Oh, I have seen this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. What the fuck? Why is it all... Green Acres is the place to be. One life, man. The life for me. When 
been spreading out so far and wide. Forget I don't know why it decided to be this <laughs> fucking huge like this. What the fuck is going on here? What's the point? What's wrong? I don't know. Just like <clears throat> it was like gigantic. Uh, you probably just zoomed in on another tab, and it it like saves that sometimes. Just just zoom out. Yeah. Like hold down control and roll your mouse wheel towards you. That's the easiest way to do it with that window selected. Yeah, I got you. Well, whatever. It happens to me all the time. It's that, it's super it, that you should be resizing like that too, TJ. Yeah, that's an easy one to fucking remember. Oh, that's because now. I zoomed in on that picture of Trump. That was what yeah, did. Yeah, that's what it was exactly. Yeah, so fucking lame. I hate I hate browsers. We, uh, <laughs> uh, at least 68 arrested in Louisville uh, as protesters demand answers in Breonna Taylor case. This is still going on. Uh, at least 68 people were arrested in Louisville, Kentucky as crowds marched Tuesday over the death of Breonna Taylor, police said. Uh, the protesters were largely uh, peaceful. Uh, protests were largely peaceful, but a large group of demonstrators uh, crossed several intersections, creating dangerous situations as traffic continued to make its way in the area. Uh, Robert Schroeder, interim chief of the Louisville Metro Police Department, uh, told reporters, uh, officers gave directions to stay on the sidewalk, and those who did not were eventually arrested. Uh, those arrested will be charged with obstructing the roadway and disorderly conduct. Uh, Tuesday's protests were expected to be one of the largest demonstrations in the city since Taylor's death. The EMT and aspiring nurse was killed in her own home in March when three Plain co clothes police officers executed a no-knock warrant returning gunfire after a boyfriend fired a warning shot because he thought uh, he was shooting at intruders. Uh, Taylor's mother, Tamika Palmer, told CNN this week that she doesn't understand why investigation into her daughter's case remains pending after months. Uh, a lot of times you want to give up, you want to walk away, but I know she deserves justice, Palmer told CNN. Um, I got to be honest with you, like that's, as the, and I feel bad about this, but there's so many of these, these people now, most of them black people that have been gunned down in various areas all over the country. It's not just a South problem. This one was in Louisville, so it's not a Southern problem. Kentucky is a, you know, it's not a deep South state or anything. Yeah. Um, so like middle of the country kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like middle America shit here, and it's happened out west, and it's happened down here, and it's happened out east. And I just haven't, I haven't, you know, followed the names and placed names with faces and incidents for all these people and, and, and really mapped out this protest movement and how it's sprung up around some of these people in these areas. And um, I don't even know what to say about it, dude. Like, I don't even know if there's anything that I could add uh I mean, there's really not say. necessarily much to say at this point. I mean, it's been we've we discussed the initial case back when it happened. I mean, you know? Honestly, though, like I don't want to descend into conspiracy territory, but we know why why they haven't been given the answers that they want, right? Right, of course. Because the answer is is that the cops treated Breonna Taylor, I'm assuming, differently than they would have treated a white woman. They yeah. busted in on her and they shot her and. You know what I mean? It probably wouldn't have happened if it was in a white neighborhood. They weren't the even in the right house, for fuck's sake. I mean, they were. They had a, a, a no-knock warrant for a different location. Right. They showed up plain clothes. You know? <laughs> the the These people think, hey, these there's some crazy motherfuckers trying to break into our house. The dude fires a warning shot, not even trying to hurt nobody, just fucking trying to, like, let them know. Like, these people he thinks are trying to break into his house know, like, uh-oh. The cops come in, guns a-blazing, waste someone who didn't even fucking have anything to do with it. I've heard the story. Yeah, I know. just didn't, I, I didn't meld the story to the to the name. But yeah, she, yeah, she I, just like, she, she was waking up from a nap. She's like, this was this was her fucking experience. She wakes up like, what the hell's going on? Boom, dead. You know, right? She may not have even woken up. You know what I mean? <laughs> like she or, or really known what was what the fuck was going on before she died. Yeah, I mean she probably she didn't. stumbled blindly out of her bedroom and in, into gunfire, and yep. it's like, and it's the wrong house. Yeah, it's not even the right house. Because they had a warrant on some other house that was like a few blocks and away. Look at what they're doing. Like, look at this woman hooked up in, in cuffs who looks like a violent woman, by the way. <laughs> yeah, she looks like a monster. She looks like, she looks like the type of woman that would teach you second grade so well that you always remembered your fucking, uh, you know, uh, math, your, your division and times tables. You know what I mean? Yeah. That type of crazy bitch. 
that would like make you a pot of really good tasting fucking soup if you felt sick. You know what I mean? The, She's the a very type of animal that you need to hook up. You need 18 stormtroopers to protect the public from because all they all they want is answers for why Brianna Taylor's door was kicked in and why she and I'm assuming her partner that was in there were killed. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. Uh, no, I don't think the dude was killed. Um, so just her. Great. So she, 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 she had nothing to do with the gunfire. No, nothing, <laughs> nothing at all. She just, she was just the one who got shot by it. Um, it's crazy stuff. Um, uh, yeah. And then there's still no, I mean, like it's been months and months and there's still literally no answers, no sort of resolution to this. And it just seems like they're trying to buy time and hope that this protest movement dies down. So don't let it, I would say if you're, if you're part of this protest, like they're trying to wait you out. So don't let them do that. Dude, um, I hope my lungs. I hope my lungs like that little nugget of banana bread that I inhaled. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck, bro! Dude, that could be some of the worst shit. Because that shit can just let my, that shit can just set up shop in the back of your throat and just like what <laughs> happened. <laughs> and, and I took a breath in to say something, and a tiny little like. <laughs> spitty blob of that banana bread went like right down the wrong pipe and i was like Bleh! you know we didn't my body went into full expel <laughs> oh god it's still there <laughs> it's okay, never going away it's never going no, away that, that, i felt it come out that time oh, okay there you god. go <laughs> uh, but don't worry uh we're, we're done with oh no we're not done with crooked cops sorry miami miami officer's wife dies trapped in back seat of hot patrol vehicle now I don't know. Maybe this is maybe this is not malfeasance. I don't. I haven't read this story. I don't know the details yet. Why did his officer wife get locked in the back of his? I mean, like it depends. Was he? Yeah, just I'm like, just not sure what floor? happened. So let's find out. Um, right. Authorities said a Miami police officer's wife died after getting trapped in the back seat of his patrol vehicle for hours in the Florida heat. Uh, according to the Miami Herald, it happened outside the couple's home in Miami Shores. The officer was uh, off work at the time. Um. The Miami Herald reports, excuse me, Clara Paulino uh, got in the backseat of the SUV Friday looking for something and was trapped for four hours without any way of contacting anyone. Her family found her. I don't think anybody could imagine uh, anything like this, that hap ever happening. Neighbor Daphne Stewart said the Miami Herald reported a, par a partition between the back seat and front seat likely stopped her from being able to honk the horn. And she so didn't have like, her like, cell phone with her call for help. This sounds like it could be an accident. Like she just got back there to grab something. Yeah. And got locked in. But why would she be in the back of his patrol car? It, says she, also it, a, it says she was trying to go grab something out of his car. Uh, why I don't would he not notice that she came back. Yeah, I don't know. Um, blah, the Miami Herald said officer... Astrides Paulino covers the midnight shift in Wynwood, got home, fell asleep, but may have left his unit oh, unlocked. Okay, so he's a graveyard so guy. He's, yeah, he's working the night shift. He comes home. He goes to bed. His wife goes to grab something out of his car, I guess, and uh, got locked in somehow. Dude, <laughs> that's just fucking sad, honestly. Like, that sounds pretty plausible. It sounds like, you know, maybe he left, like, his phone in the back seat because he was tired. Yeah, or something like that. And she wanted to grab it for something, and she went back there, and the door closed behind her, and it's locked. And she's like, or, well, it couldn't have been his phone because she could have used that to call 911. So it must have been something. He left his lunch bag back there, and she didn't want it to get all hot in the sun and baked. Yeah, I wish it would tell – I wish it would say what the hell she – I don't well, know. They're investigating it, but I, you know, it's, yeah, sounds... I mean, like, I don't know why you would close the door behind you if you're just going in to grab something. So that's kind of weird. Dude, that fucking, that picture of Laura right there, even without the eye, looks so fucking terrible. <laughs> I know. Look at it. <laughs> I will swallow your soul. Look at the one they got on the, the cover of the Drudge Report. It's just like, monster. Uh, yeah, it is a fucking, <laughs> a monster, fucking monster, dude. It's gigantic. Shut up, Matt Drudge. You don't live in Louisiana. Does he live in Louisiana? No, he does not. He lives in Matt New York. Matt, fuck you. You don't. You ain't got no credibility, bitch. I'm in the eye of the. I'm in the eye of Laura right now, bitch. What do you? What do you? What did you ever do, Matt Drudge? Oh wait, he's dead, isn't he? No, he's not. <laughs> oh wait, who was it that died? Breitbart died. Okay, yeah, Breitbart dead. Breitbart is dead. Uh, this just sounds like an unfortunate accident. 
Yeah, I'm and not. I, I mean, I, I think it should probably be investigated to make sure it was an accident, to, or at least you know, rule out as much as you can't possibly can the possibility that it was something less. Where uh, I was, innocent. where I grew up in the Central Valley, and you guys experienced this. You were there in July. Yeah. Um, in my hometown, it gets like 105, 104, 103 routinely for days on end. Right. And uh, this was like, it was degree, it was 91 degrees, 93 degrees outside. Now you're still going to die. Mm-hmm. But you you talk about like, we hear about one of these pretty much every other year where some person leaves their kid strapped to a, in, into a baby chair because they need to just quote unquote run into the store. And then they come back out to a dead infant. Right. Yeah, of course. Yeah. That, or hear that. or even, even worse, and you don't hear about these as often, but they happen more often. Somebody does it to their dog. Right. Dogs die that way all the time. So this is just like, and it, for it to accidentally happen, you know, that's just tragic. It's just, you don't hear really, you don't usually hear about adults dying uh, like this, but I guess most people don't have, uh, you know, these patrol cars where yeah, you can lock someone to show in the back. you never ever ever leave your dog unattended in a car period but if you're gonna do it don't do it in summer ever ever in any kind of heat oh yeah ever. i don't know <clears throat> that was one of, i mean we, i remember being taught that like in school especially growing up here like people are like do not ever do leave your dog in the car it will die like i'll tell you like back in the day we had a pickup and we had dogs that like to go into town with us and shit mm-hmm and we would leave them like we had. We, I grew up in a small town. They would jump up in the bed of the pickup truck, and we'd leave them in the bed of the pickup truck, unattended, because they knew to stay. Right. But never in the summer when they were going to be baking in the sun. All you know what I mean? Like you know, Absolutely. in the spring when it was nice, or the fall, or the autumn, or the winter when it was nice and brisk, or whatever. They'd oh yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you definitely don't want to fucking do that. Um, police commissioner to launch investigation after officer kills dog in fenced yard. Per- Man, you, you perfect trend. When you said we're not, we're not done with fucking uh, shitty cop stories. Yet, are we? No, I'm not. I wasn't. I mean, like, look, I didn't even go. I didn't go looking for it. I wasn't like, I'm gonna fucking get some cop hate. There's just, there just happened to be a lot. There's, there's a lot of fresh cop hate right now. Yeah, uh, I don't know if I want to watch a video of this, but Detroit police officer uh, commissioner. Uh, Willie Burton says he wants to investigate an investigation into why a dog was shot and killed in its own yard by a police officer. I can already solve. I already solved this crime because so many, because a bunch of cops are sadistic pieces of shit that are not properly vetted. And you just fucking like people with emotional problems that want power. So they become cops. I will take it one step further than you. I don't disagree, but I'll even double down on what you said. Police, police um, offices as they exist and the job of a policeman as it exists today in America actually rewards and draws sadistic people to it. Of course. It's like a, it's like a magnet and rewards people who are sadistic. Um, so, yeah, that's what happened. A sadistic fuck cop showed up and a little dog barked at him and he shot it. I guess we should probably take a look at the video. Want, I don't want to. I can't. Dude, I, I'll tell you what, dude. You can watch it if you want, but I'm going to just fucking, like, minimize this or whatever the fuck because oh, I yeah. can't watch a fucking dog be killed this by a cop. The- I, I just can't. I can't take it in the eye of the hurricane, TJ, the in the eye of the hurricane. I can't. Into what happened. A warning for you, though. The video is very disturbing to watch. Grant All Holmes right. has more. This is the corner where it happened. The dog's becoming entangled in the fence. The officer saying she was forced to shoot. That shot now sparking. Forced to shoot. Dog comes around the corner and follows the police canine along the fence. As the canine approaches the fence, the dog, according to police, bites the canine's muzzle, trapping the four-legged officer. Its partner grabs her gun and fires. The dog writhing in pain until it dies. The owner standing in the front yard the entire time. In an interview this week, the officer's commander called the situation unfortunate, but life and death. She com- <sighs> How is it life and death? That dog is not going to be able to kill that other dog through the fucking fence. Yeah, I, I didn't watch, and I had the whole thing fucking muted. I can't listen to it. I didn't want to hear it. I didn't want to see it. <laughs> I, I, you know me, TJ. I'm overly sensitive to this shit, and I've already cried on fucking Flash Fried <laughs> one time this month. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to do it again. No, like like dogs, dude. I can't handle it when dogs are mistreated, hurt, abused. I, I have a big fucking heart for people, but I have my heart really aches for dogs because I, I will tell you what, dude. The most loyal 
friends that I've ever had in my life have all been canines. Oh yeah. Since I was a child. Dogs are great. I'm I'm, so, I'm I'm a big dog lover too. So they dogs deserve to be in a position like you know that you know that joke that L. Ron Hubbard made in fucking uh, Battlefield Earth about how you know the man animals were actually run by a superior species known as the canines. <laughs> you know what I mean? I yeah. actually believe that's true. I believe that they should be elevated to that. <laughs> like we should treat dogs in America like the Hindus treat cows. That's not a bad idea. I'm not, I'm, it's not even a it's it, it's not even not a bad idea it's a it should be reality <laughs> it should be yeah dogs are, my, are yeah far more noble creatures than than we um but cops are not uh tennessee cops raid wrong home point guns at naked woman while looking for teen suspect did i say we should treat dogs like cows treat hindus just now <laughs> i don't know i think you said hind how hindus treat cows but you might have said how cows treat hindus. i feel like i said <laughs> i don't know funny and if i didn't never mind <laughs> well you know whatever uh <laughs> so yeah these cops uh, hey, cows treat hindus pretty gently as well so okay, I guess hey, it, works. it works either way Sorry, uh, three tennessee officers have <laughs> been decommissioned one of these to yeah. tj how long is the cop suck block? I don't know. Oh I forget God. how long it is or how deep it goes. Oh, uh, this might be the last pleb story, though. Um, you know what? Uh, let me check something real quick. Uh, you know what? We're this is we're gonna give the plebs a little bit longer today, so they're gonna they're gonna get a little extra. Um, because okay. I I specifically split it to where we your your two videos about uh, the the you know well, well I don't want to spoil it but. Sure, sure. But uh, sure. I put those in the center so that we could give the plebs one and then tease them with the next. Gotcha. Um, but uh, anyway, we'll just go through this real quick. Uh, this is yet another instance of cops just going to the wrong place because they're fucking dumb. Um, officers with the Metro Nashville Police Department uh, raided the home of uh, Azaria Hines last Tuesday. Uh, the unclothed Hines was asleep on her sofa after a late shift. When she heard a banging outside, when she realized the commotion was coming from officers, Hines later said she asked them to hold on. Her calls were ignored. Body cam footage from the raid shows Hines attempting to ask the officers to wait while they break her door down with a battering ram, uh, which occurred fewer than 30 seconds after they shouted the warning. Uh, after what smashing... What have in her basement? A secret lab where she was building a robot? They weren't even at the right place. The they were at the wrong... They weren't even at the right location. They were looking for some teenage drug dealer or some shit. So this is oh fucking. They, 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 me, yeah, bro. this wasn't even. They weren't even. They didn't even intend to be there. Killer? What? I don't know if we're, I don't know if this bitch is gonna be naked in this video. So yeah, I guess I might terrible. have to. I might have to do some editing if she is. All right, I guess they're letting her put pants on or something, but who knows? It's just like this whole like we showed up at the wrong address shit has got to stop. Bro. After smashing the door, the wrong for... address. Yeah, how do you have an active investigation going on of a drug dealer that's dangerous? I mean, just think about this. Where he lives. Let me tell you something. Like pizza guys, not only do they have a more dangerous job actually than cops. Like, there's way, <laughs> but. I've never heard, I mean, like, pizza guys don't go to the wrong fucking house. I mean, I guess they probably do sometimes, but it doesn't, I've never had it happen to me. I've never had a pizza dude yeah. show up and be like, hey, is this fucking, do you order pizzas? I'm like, no. Never had that happen. Somehow I mean, cops I, can't figure I've this out. Of, I've heard of shit like that happening. Like, here, I'll tell you something that happened the, uh, not that long ago. Like, a month ago, I ordered a DoorDash, right? Uh -huh. And what happens is... They leave the shit, and then eventually they text you. Like, a lot of times they'll text you a picture of it sitting by your doorstep. Well, they left some shit, and I looked at the picture, and something about it was wrong because there was a doormat under it that wasn't mine. And I was like, I went out front, and sure enough, I didn't have no fucking DoorDash. Well, luckily for me, I went and looked at my other neighbors, and it was somebody on my floor. The person just fucked up and put it in front of the wrong. But it happens, you know what I mean? But that's pizza. That's not <laughs> But they're battering ramming somebody's fucking door down with your guns drawn. You definitely want to be a little more careful about that. You know what I mean? It's like the failure rate on pizza is better than the failure rate on the police.
when it comes to making sure that they're delivering what they're coming to deliver to the right address, which in the case of pizza is pizza. In the case of police is battering rams and guns and body armor and dogs that are trained to bite people. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at... We got two of these videos. Um, yeah, so before we start this, TJ, let me... Let Paul, me you want to lay down some context. Eh? Since, you said, since you said you were teasing the plebs with this, I like that, by the way. Yeah. I'm all into teasing. I like teasing the plebs especially. Of course. So we've gone through a long block of very dreary, the police are bad stories, but I thought I would give you some positivity here. Did you know? Well, you can see it right here on the fucking screen that President Trump is the most pro-gay president. Hell yeah. Possibly ever. Oh yeah. Do you want to find out why? I sure do. We watch the video and kill our cams, TJ. Uh, we probably don't need to kill our cams since there's only two of us. Sure. Because okay. in the test well, I did, it with with two, it usually holds up. If if it starts to drop frames, I'll let you know, and we can we can we can do it. President okay, Trump okay. is the most pro-gay president in American history. I can. <laughs> I love the music, man. <sighs> My name is Rick Grinnell. I'm America's first openly gay cabinet member. As a United States Senator, Joe Biden said gay people couldn't receive security clearances because we would be a yep. <laughs> security risk. Joe must have been terrified when Donald Trump appointed me as acting director. Of uh, yeah, so basically, <laughs> you're just taking advantage of the fact that all these politicians were anti-gay when America was anti-gay. And now they're all pro gay now that America's pro gay. Right. Like, because I mean, like, all the fuck, all the mainstream, pol with the exception of people like Bernie Sanders, who actually was like pro gay long before it was popular, but whatever. He's, he's, he ain't, he ain't being president. So, sure. um, you know, but like all these fucking politicians, you know, back like when I was like a kid, I named that long ago, like fucking 15 years ago or something, we're all like, yeah, gays, I don't know about that. Then the opinion polls flipped, and they're like, yeah, gays, hell yeah, we love them. You know what right. I mean? It's like, whatever, dude. Uh, Joe Biden. Joe Biden, you know what Joe Biden's opinion on gays is? It's whatever fucking, if the opinion polls tomorrow were like, America hates gays again, Joe Biden go right back to being a homophobe. You know what I think of when I think of people like Trump and Joe Biden and pretty much the entire political establishment on both sides of the aisle? Do you know what I think of what they think on most social issues? I'll show you, TJ. You ready? Yeah. I love the gays. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they feel or I hate the gay, you know, whatever they need to do to yeah. whip up like these fucking social issues to these people. They don't care. Yeah. It's just like, I don't even think a lot of the people that are riding with Biden are even making that argument. Like Biden doesn't give a fuck. There's no way you think he gives a fuck. You look at his past record. He's definitely not an ally for gay people and never has been no matter how he paints himself. So this, I, but you know, is Trump going to be more destructive than him? I don't want to get mired in that. But the fact that they're this, by the way, paid for by the Trump campaign. Oh, so this is a, a narrative he's really pushing hard. This is I see the log cabin Republicans logo in there, uh, yep. and log cabin Republicans are the gay Republicans. Yep. National intelligence. The fact which, if you think about it, log cabin, you know, <laughs> it's a little suggestive. Uh huh. <laughs> the fact that I'm gay didn't even phase Donald Trump. Joe Biden certainly didn't congratulate the appointment or even acknowledge it, but his silence was deafening. Why? President Hold Trump wait a minute, 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 wait a minute pause. <laughs> so. You do know that not every politician in Washington typically calls any politician that's appointed to the cabinet and confers their thanks. Now, maybe some do. But the idea isn't the idea that you want to be treated like a normal person, not treated special because you're gay. You want to just be treated like a normal person. Guess what? The normal the normal Republican National Security Advisor typically doesn't get a phone call from an opposing side politician, probably <laughs> going, welcome on in. Hope to work with, you know, <laughs> why would they? It's just it'd be weird. This is just like stupid shit, dude. This is just like stupid. Like he's trying to trump it up like. 
Trump hired me and Joe Biden didn't even come to my party. And it's like, fuck you. Get out of here, bitch. Trump has done more to advance the rights of gays and lesbians in three All right. years. I can't wait to hear than it. And Joe Biden did in 40 plus years in Washington. Okay, lay it out. For four decades, Joe Biden has attacked the LGBT community. As a U.S. Senator, Biden supported Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Uh, did. Everybody, everybody did, though. <laughs> That was like, but like, like, like the thing is the, the, the irony that's draped over this whole thing for me is that he's making, he's making an argument for Republicans who were like Joe Biden's position on don't ask, don't tell yeah. plus a bunch of other restrictive shit. Like they took it to the nth degree. I mean, Republicans didn't like don't ask, don't tell. They want to just be like gays banned from the military. Don't ask, don't tell was like the compromise. Yes. That was the more progressive position at the time. Right. The Republicans right. were okay, against well, being well, gay serving gays at all. We'll let gays in. We will not ask, and they are not allowed to tell other people that they're gay, but they're allowed to serve. Like that was the compromise between the Republican position of no no gays in the military. Yes, <laughs> you dumb fuck. So I mean, like, yeah, like the idea that that I mean, like, I guess you could say it's homophobic. Obviously, in retrospect, don't ask, don't tell was a stupid policy, but like, it was better than the fucking well, Republican is. policy. Was a because like like you're a harm reduction voter, right? Right. Was a don't ask, don't tell policy that actually allowed gays access to military and its benefits. No, I mean, look for, for the time, it was an imperfect solution to the problem. But was it a hell of a lot better than like gays are not allowed? Yeah, yeah. That doesn't make it perfect, but like saying touting that as like proof that Biden is like anti-gay or something is pretty weird. I'm not saying that he's not. Maybe he is. He might fucking be the most homophobic person on the face of the earth, but that doesn't demonstrate it. Right. And, and every one of these. Sorry, go ahead. So Biden supported DOMA, the Defense of Marriage Act. You know who else did? Every Republican senator. Yeah, I mean, like, that's kind of, I mean, a shit ton of Democrats, too, because they're basically the same party. Um, Marriage Act. Biden voted to cut off federal funds to any school that teaches acceptance of homosexuality. Okay. And you know who does that? Every Republican fucking politician at the state level in Southern states. Uh, yeah. And um, also the Trump administration has done that. So I don't know. I mean, maybe he's going to try to tout some kind of Trump record. We'll look at Trump's actual record in a moment. Biden sure. said again and again that he was against marriage equality. Fair enough. Senator, do you support straight. I mean, like, I, I was there. Like, I don't know how short you think America's memory is. I know it is pretty short in a lot of instances, but... No seconds. I was fucking around for the gay marriage debate, and I seem to recall that the Republicans were the more staunchly anti-gay party. Like, oh, most, of, most of the Democrats kind of, once again, they wanted to do this compromise position of, like, civil unions and shit. Like, no, we could, they can have civil unions. It'll be the same as marriage and everything, but it's, you know, a little different. They wanted to go this middle way, and that has been, the, that's, that's why Which the is what Democrats is, consistently it's, it's, fucking do. They look at the Republican position. It's like, well, what if we just, like, you know. Well, that's what Obamacare was. Obamacare was Mitt Romney's, the Republican nominee against Obama in his reelection. It was his fucking plan. It was his state plan. Yep. With its origins in the uh the the belly of the Heritage Foundation. Which oh wait, that's a big liberal think tank, right? <laughs> no, it's a super yeah. right wing think tank. Uh they came up, they cooked it up as an alternative to universal health care because they saw the Democrats They're pushing for that. People, hold on now, sir. I have an idea. Well, let's hear it, Walter P. Longbottom. Oh, quiet down over there, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. I'm going to get to you in a minute. Listen. Hand me a lot of poets here. No, I need to light my cigar. I have an idea. Instead of offering them health care for free, which of course would have to come out of our pockets. Murmur, 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 grab, 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 grab. Quiet down, quiet down. We offer them the option. No, 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 no. That's the wrong word. We offer them a mandate to purchase insurance from all the gentlemen sitting here at this table. <laughs> <laughs> what a beautiful world we live in. Oh, fuck me. Gay marriage? No. Marriage is between a man and a woman. And now, well, now that we've made progress, 
Joe Biden has changed. <laughs> I love that I smeared the name of Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck. I was like, why is that? What is Longfellow? It just sounds like a Poncy rich guy name, and it's the only thing I could come up with after I did Jay Giles Hornswoggle or whatever school was. I can't even remember. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Joe Biden did he? He did what? He changed his mind? Yeah. What a terrible thing. What a bastard. I know firsthand that President Trump is the strongest ally that gay Americans have ever had in the White House. Thank God. Donald Trump is the first president in American history to be pro-gay marriage from his first day in office. Also the first Republican in American history that's been pro-gay marriage at all. <laughs> yeah. President Trump knew I was gay when he appointed me to one of the most prestigious and powerful ambassadorships in the world. Wow. As ambassador to Germany, President Trump fully supported our fight to crush the homophobic and barbaric. Wait a minute. <laughs> we didn't fight fucking ISIS because they were anti-gay. That had like fucking nothing to do with it. You're going to try to tout that? <laughs> he made me ambassador to a place that we exploited in an endless series of proxy wars with China and Russia over resources and geo geopolitical control over the resources. And I was gay, and I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, well, thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. <laughs> Trump, for being so progressive to send a gay shark over there to rape the fucking Middle and East. The Iranian regime that supports them. Well, President Trump was denying the homophobic regime money, the Obama Biden team was giving them billions. Wow, this like these issues had nothing to do with gays. Like no one fucking oh, said the, the Iran deal. The word fucking gay was probably never even brought up. And by by the way, the Iran deal was working. Yeah, the, uh, the Iran the deal was designed to not, to like get them to not fucking proliferate nuclear fucking weapons. And by the way, yeah, according the to pretty much everyone but working. us, they were doing it. It was working. An international team of UN-backed fucking impartial scientists were allowed into these fucking facilities, and they agreed to further inspections, and they agreed to sign on the dotted line that they were never going to develop a nuke and all that shit, and we started fucking trading with them again, and shit started to loosen up, and then, oh, and then fucking Trump came in and tore it up. Yeah, and why did you tear it up? Not for any actual geopolitical reason, but just because Obama had done it. Like political relations between Iran and America have been shit for a long time, but they started to normalize for the first time in a fucking century because of this Iran deal. And then Trump just came in and unilaterally tore it up and fucking turned that area into a beehive again. Nope, don't like it. Obama done it bad. No good. Stupid fucking Charles. Joe Biden not only admits it, he says he'll do it again if elected president. I would, I would re Good. <laughs> I mean, I don't know that I, I don't know that Iran would actually go along with it again. They'd be like, no, America, you're too schizophrenic to make a deal with. But states in Iran nuclear deal. President Trump began a historic campaign to decriminalize homosexuality around the globe at the United Nations, where he publicly challenged the 69 countries who make being gay a crime to change their laws. All right. My administration is working with other nations to stop criminalizing of homosexuality. Gays and lesbians. All right, good. I mean, I guess that's good. Can be put to death. I mean, yeah, whatever. It is what it is, dude. <laughs> I don't even fucking know, bro. Uh, so, yeah, we could. All right, so plebs, you got to get out. But here's what you're missing. There's another one of these. This is there's actually another video about like gays for Trump kind of shit, and you guys so can't see it. If you, if you guys thought that that first one was stupid and easily debunked, you have seen nothing yet, you silly, silly plebs. <laughs> no, you ain't seen nothing Poor yet. Deprived plebs will never get to know the real arguments, and you'll never get to see Donald Trump's actual position either. Yep. So yeah. All you can do as plebs is just believe what you were just told by Trump's national security advisor. All right. So plebs, uh, look, uh, become patrons. Quit fucking around. Just do it. 
Just do it. Come on. Come on. Dumb. Just fucking do what you need to do. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> All right. The plebs are gone. 